there is a very large amount of very good writing advice out there that will help you grow as a writer. But I have compiled a list of five underrated tips that exponentially improved my writing. So here we go. The five best writing tips I have ever heard. Number one, always change the weather. This may seem unimportant, but it will actually increase the tension and memorability of every one of your scenes. For example, take a look at your novel. Is every scene taking place on a mild sunny day where the weather is so unremarkable that it's never even mentioned? If so, you're missing out. Not only does changing the weather offer you new and interesting things to describe, it can also increase the obstacles for your character. For example, if they're driving somewhere important or stressful, it would be a much more interesting scene if there was an impending tornado or blizzard. It can also affect the mood of your characters. If it rains for weeks at a time, some of your characters will struggle to keep their mood up if they're constantly soggy and covered in mud. Or if the story is taking place in the winter, some of your characters might struggle with seasonal affective disorder. One caveat, you do want to remember that the weather is unpredictable in real life. It does not match what your mood is. So when first paying attention to the weather in your novel, it might first seem appropriate to try to match the weather to the tone of the scene. So if your characters are sad and defeated, then it will rain. And when they're triumphant, the sun will rise again. This is called pathetic fallacy, which is a classic literary device, but it's also quite predictable. <laughs> Don't hate me. So a lot of the time I prefer to add interest and surprise to my scenes by making the weather conflict with the tone. So I make it storming during times of triumph or peace and then sunny at a funeral. It's good to include all different types of weather too. Hail, lightning, winter, thunder. Number two. One unique description is better than a thousand familiar ones. When describing either a setting or a character, focus on only one specific detail and make it something that wouldn't immediately spring into your reader's mind. For example, if you're describing a grandma, don't say she had curly white hair and reading glasses because that is what already exists in your reader's mind when they hear the word grandma. There's nothing new and interesting for them to perk up and pay attention to your story. A bunch of familiar descriptions, one right after the other, will not only bore your reader, but also make it so they forget your story as soon as they put it down. You didn't add anything new to their brain, and you've missed a golden opportunity to stick out in their memory. So when they see your next book, they'd be like, oh hey, I remember that author. They were pretty original. I felt surprised. And then they'll pick up your next book. So instead, when you are describing a grandma, pick only one unique aspect of her character that highlights her personality and paints a unique image in your reader's mind. Maybe she does have curly white hair and glasses, but that does not matter if she's wearing a golden bralette with diamond studs. Or she has the lingering odor of marijuana or one large mole at the juncture of her eyebrows that she keeps scratching until it bleeds. Give the reader something new to add to their idea of what a grandma is. And then, if you call it a grandma, they'll fill in the rest. They'll probably give her gray hair. Maybe even glasses. Leave that to them and you don't need to describe it. Number three, the motivations of your protagonist's friends can make or break your story. It is very common for the characters on your hero's team to just be helpful little buddies that support and agree with everything that the protagonist says. And when I say it like that, it sounds pretty boring, because it is. If two characters always have the same goals and motivations, then they will never be in conflict. And that is boring. It is much more meaningful and interesting if two characters on the same team have different goals or motivations. Because then, not only are they going to be acting in opposition to each other, they're also going to be trying to do it in a way that doesn't harm their friend. And they're going to be constantly wrestling internally with whether their goals are important enough to act out against their friend who is someone they really care about and respect, until it all just becomes too much and they blow up and have a huge fight or just decide to strike out on their own and abandon their friend. Doesn't that sound more interesting? It doesn't have to be as dramatic as all that. Let's say you have your protagonist who always wants to think first, no, <laughs> who always wants to act first and think later. Maybe have their best friend be a little more cautious. Cautious. And wants to help them see the benefits of strategy. And then your protagonist will want to help their friends see that they are falling behind and waiting too long or missing opportunities. Neither one is right or wrong, but they are in opposition, which is interesting. Maybe your hero wants to avenge his family and destroy the emperor and everyone who supports him. And his best friend wants to destroy the emperor too, but he isn't motivated by revenge. So he wants to do it diplomatically or with careful planning. Get creative. Number four, end every chapter by introducing a new goal. This is kind of similar to that piece of advice that says to end every scene with a question in the hopes that it will propel your reader to keep reading. But I've never found that advice to be particularly helpful since it's hard to just add meaningful questions over and over again in your story. So to me, I like to try to add a new goal at the end of every chapter. 
That way, the tension and stakes slowly increase over time, without seeming like it's just one thing after another thrown at them from the plot, since they have a new goal driving their actions. It's coming from within them. Internal. Doesn't have to be major. Can be small. Maybe you have a character who is a student, who learns of a summer camp opportunity that they really want to go to, so they have to try to convince their strict parents into letting them go. Then, in the next chapter, they decide that they can bargain with their parents, and they say, if I get an A on my final project, then I will be allowed to go to summer camp. And their parents agree. Now, they need to get an A on their project. And then in the next chapter, the project is much harder than they thought it would be, and they don't get an A. So now, they have to decide whether to ask their teacher if they are allowed to redo their project, or come up with a new agreement with their parents, or try to lie about their grade. Whatever they choose will not only impact how the story progresses, but it also shows an insight into your character. A new goal at the end of each chapter. It's likely that you already have these new goals sprinkled throughout your story as it is, but making sure to end each chapter with one forces you to evaluate whether you are layering the conflict frequently enough and not lingering too long on one aspect of your novel. You don't want your characters to just be spinning their wheels for half the middle. Ending chapters is something that I struggle with, and I've been trying to implement this new strategy of adding a new goal to the end of each one. And I've noticed it drastically improves the readability of my story. It's not just a cheap cliffhanger, it's like the literary version of clickbait. And it's also not a neat, tidy ending for every chapter that gives your reader a ton of opportunities to put your book down. Number five, don't write the first thing that you think. This is probably the most important piece of writing advice that you can hear. The first thing you think is likely the first thing that everyone else thinks and it will make a much more familiar and much more predictable story, and it's much more likely to come across as boring. You'll never stand out in a crowded marketplace writing the same story that everybody else is writing. So, when you're examining your structure, your setting, your characterization, your word choice, all of it, always ask yourself, was this just the first thing that I thought of? How familiar are each of these elements, and how can I make them more original? I have a whole video on this topic that you can watch here.